But before I show you the last game, I want to call you all out. Can you make 50 games in one day? If you make a video like this, I will link it in the end card of this video. I doubt any of you will be brave enough, but the offers... Brave enough? Jonas, you think I'm not brave enough to make 50 games in one day? I'm gonna prove you wrong. <laughs> Okay, so a few weeks ago, this guy named Jonas Tire Roller dropped a video where he made 50 games in one day. And then at the end, he challenged the entire internet to do the exact same thing. So today, I'm going to be attempting to create 50 games in one day. Why am I doing this? Okay, so um, to start off, what I'm going to be doing is, for this challenge, I'm going to be using the Phaser 3 framework along with the TypeScript programming language. So... I'm just going to create a new directory called um, 50 games and I have a phaser typescript template which I'm just going to be cloning inside of this into this 50 games folder um, oops. and I'll open up this folder inside of Visual Studio Code open up the terminal and install all the dependencies that I need to use phaser along with TypeScript. I'll be right back when it's done. Okay so it's done now and now I'm going to be um, using npm run watch. What this does is it will just run a, it will compile all of my TypeScript code into JavaScript code and then run it inside of a local web server. So. Be right back when this is done. And it just opened up inside of a new browser or inside of a new tab in my browser. And um, as you can see, this is all that the uh, template gives me. It's just this white square inside of this canvas. Okay, so since I have 24 hours to do this one day, right now it is currently um, 8.51 on... Friday, April 10th, if you can see that. So I'm just going to be setting a 10-minute um, ten, uh, ten timer and attempting to create my first game in 10 minutes. Uh, timer. Okay, 10-minute um, timer. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna start button. Okay, it started. So the first thing I have to do is I'm gonna create a new um, folder uh, file called player. And I'm gonna make this extend phaser.physics.rk.sprite. Uh, create a constructor and So all I'm doing right now is I'm just adding, um, all this code does is it adds, it creates a player object and adds it to the uh, scene and create a private player, which will be of type player and this dot player equals a new player. And I also need to add physics into the game. So it already has this Y gravity of 300 inside of my game configuration. So I should have a square that is affected by gravity. 
So now I have to make it actually land or interact with the ground. So this dot set collide world to balance to true. And I'll create a function in here called update. And I'm just going to be creating some very simple um, keyboard input here. So this dot scene dot input dot keyboard dot create cursor keys and if cursors if cursors dot right dot is down so if I'm holding down the right key then I'll create a um, speed variable which will be a number and set the speed to 200 And then if I'm holding down the right arrow key, I'll, do, I'll set the velocity x to the speed. Else, if I'm holding the um, left key, I will do this dot set velocity x to negative speed. And if I'm not holding any key at all, I will set the velocity x to zero. Also, I have to create a update method inside of my scene and then update the uh, player from update the player inside of the scenes update function. So I have to call the player's update function from the uh, scenes update function. If that makes sense. And hopefully, uh, refresh again. It should all be working now. So. Yeah, as you can see, I have left and right movement, and how much time do I have left? I have about five minutes left, and I still have to add the enemies that the player has to avoid. So I'm going to be creating a new class um, inside of the objects folder, new file, enemy.typescript. Put that right there, and just take the, enemy, uh, the player code. Copy that here, rename this enemy, and I don't need cursors here. All I need, all I really need to do is add it to the scene for this to work. So I'll create a group called enemies, which will be a phaser dot physics dot arcade dot Dot group and inside of the create function I will set the enemies group to this dot physics dot add dot group and now I have to spawn the enemy so I'm gonna be using two um, functions here I'll create a function called spawn enemies right and then another function called Spawn enemies timer, and what the spawn enemies timer will do is it will um, spawn the enemies, and then we'll do uh, a delayed call. So in let's say every second, it will call the spawn enemies timer again, which means it'll spawn the enemies again and do this in an infinite loop. What the spawn enemies function should do is um var e equals new enemy uh give it an x and i want to give it a random position so var x equals phaser dot math dot between 0 and 800 which is the width of the canvas and var y equals phaser dot math dot between um, 0 and let's say 32 and I'll make it at those x y coordinates I'll, I'll give them the square texture and I will make them red 
probably change the player's color as well. Um, and then I'll do enemies.add and then I'll add this enemy to the um, enemies group. And then I will call the spawn enemies timer. Let me see if that worked. Okay, there you go. There's one enemy there. And this dot spawn enemies is not a function. Right, because also I should be giving it a, um, it doesn't need any arguments and I have to give it the correct context for this to work. So now hopefully everything should be working fine. Okay, there you go. So I've got these falling enemies, they don't really do anything yet. Uh, so what I want to do is inside of my create function in my scene at 52 seconds left the start physics dot add dot uh, 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 overlap in between the player and the enemies and it'll take a callback which will take a player and an enemy and um, 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 it'll do this dot scene dot restart so it'll restart the scene and um, I don't want any other uh, callback and I'll do this so hopefully this works. It should restart the scene. I have 20 seconds left on my timer. And yes, it works. So with five seconds left, we managed to complete the first game. A simple game where you have to dodge these enemies. 49 games left. Okay, so now game number two. So I'm going to be restarting the 10 minute timer now. So just like game number one, game number two will have a very simple concept, except in game one you had to avoid these enemies, otherwise you lost. In this game, you will have to collect the enemies. I'm just going to re be replacing this line which restarts the scene with E dot destroy, and E is the enemy that collided with the player. So refresh the page, as you can see I can now collect these enemies and I got that done in under a minute so I'll start on game number three now but first I just want to change the player's color so it looks a bit nicer um, a green I'll make the player green so for game three what I'm going to be doing is the minute the uh, enemies uh, collide with the player. I will give them a uh, dot set dot set velocity y. Mm, right, uh, I'll give it a velocity of negative forty. Uh, for example, okay, negative 40 is not enough. I'll do negative uh, 200. I'm just thinking random numbers here. So, what I want it to do is bounce off of the green player. Um, it's not working. Okay, maybe instead of adding an overlap I should add a collider and give it a higher number um okay there and there you go the, the thing bounces now so um this is a game you'll have to make sure um not make sure they don't touch the ground just keep keep them bouncing on your head this is game number three now game four and it's not even been five minutes yet so I have no ideas what should I what should I do for game four um hmm. okay so I'll make the enemies restart the scene again 
so don't touch your enemies. But this time... This time you can fly. I can fly. So... So slow. I'm gonna make fly a bit faster. 100. There, so now... It should be flying or going higher much faster. Yeah, this is better. So this is game four and I still have two minutes left. Let's see what I can do. Okay. Um, so how about in game... Wait, was that game three or game four? I think that was game three. I lost count already. <laughs> um, so game one was the one where you had to avoid them. Game two, you collect them. Game three, they bounced off of you. So this is game four. Okay, so game number five. Um, you can still fly, but this time you have to collect them again. Perfect. Game five. Um, so I can now fly and collect these um, enemy things. Are they enemies if you collect them? Not sure, but... This is game five. You can fly now. It's kind of fun. Oh, I should make a flappy bird. Hmm. I should make a flappy bird later on. So, these are my five games so far. Game number six, and I made like four games in ten minutes or something. Let's see. For game number six, what I want to do is, again, you can actually, you can uh, collect the, um, what do you call it? You can collect the enemies again, but this time, I'm going to use a completely different input method. I'm going to create a var pointer. So I'm going to create a variable called pointer, and this will be the um, scenes 25 seconds left active pointer or it's seen dot input dot active pointer and I'll set the body's exposition to pointer dot x and the uh, body dot y's position oh my timer is done okay we started Okay, restarting the timer, and I'll set this to pointer dot not post message pointer dot y. So I'll make the x coordinate and the body's x coordinate the um, exact same here, and that will be equal to the mouse pointer cursor things um, position. Okay, this is strange. Okay, um... And now everything seems to be working. I can control my uh, player with the mouse and I have to collect these oh. um, sometimes it doesn't seem to work properly but there you go game six okay so for the next game, game 7 I believe, exact same thing but again you have to avoid the enemies. I'm recycling this one game so many times. Oh so it's restarting, 
Oh, so it's restarting the scene, but then... Okay, so instead of restarting the scene, because it's restarting the scene, but then it's moving the player back to the mouse position, so it doesn't seem like it's working, even though it actually is. So I'll just be reloading the page instead and hoping it doesn't break anything. Oh, that doesn't work either. So it refreshes the page, but it takes a few seconds to do that. So instead, you know, I'll just do, I'll just destroy the player and then it'll probably freeze the game, but at least you'll know when you get hit. So there you go. This means game over. It freezes the game. So there's these red enemies falling from the screen and if you touch them it's game over perfect the game works nice so that was game seven okay so for game eight it's kind of the same thing as the game where the enemies are falling and I have to collect them with the mouse but um this time uh the enemies aren't falling there's no um physics enabled on the enemies and they just spawn randomly on the canvas. So for game 9, it's pretty much the same thing as game 8, except um, this time you have to avoid the enemies, and I think I went there by mistake. So it's pretty much the same thing, except you don't want the enemies to touch you this time. So it gets harder and harder as you go on, and there you go, I hit one by mistake. Okay, so um, for game 10, Basically what I did was, um, I changed the control so now it's like a top-down control so I'm using WASD to move and I'm using my mouse cursor to look around and it's the um, same goal as before, you just have to avoid the red enemies. So this is game 10 and now that I'm done 10 games, I'm 20%, I've completed the challenge 20% so 80 more percent, 40 more games thing is right now it is um 11 10 p.m so i'm gonna go to bed now and i will continue working on this tomorrow so i have until about nine o'clock tomorrow to finish the remaining 40 games so see you tomorrow so um hey everyone i'm back i got a good night's sleep and I did some homework and it's about six o'clock right now so I'm gonna work on finishing my 40 games yay so um this is game 11 basically I just changed the colors up a bit and now the enemies are um chasing you and you just have to avoid them if they touch you it's game over game 12 basically game 11 but you can shoot the enemies now game 13 you collect randomly spawning coins while shooting randomly spawning enemies okay so game 14 it's like you have to protect the uh coin from the zombies and the coin spawns in a random position and if the zombies touch the coin then it's game over and the coin spawns in a new position. Game 15 and I already don't have ideas. Got it. I'm gonna go up to my code and delete all of this stuff here. Right? Boop. And delete that. And I will add um
so you have a button. If you click the button, it says hi. This is the game. Game number 16. It's the button again. But this time when you click it, it sends you to my itch page where you can actually play some real games. Please check this page out. Link in the description below. Game 17. You have this random you have a button that's randomly moving around and um, if you touch it or uh, if you click it then it's game over you win. So this is game 18. It's um, a bad version of Flappy Bird. Game 19. Flappy Bird with lasers. Yeah. 20. Flappy Bird with lasers again but this time the bird is controlled with a mouse. And I died. Okay. I'm out. It's kind of fun. Okay, so for game 21, it's this weird top-down game where you have to avoid lasers. So last week I participated in a uh, bullet hell game jam where we had to create a bullet hell game in a week. And that inspired me to create a simple uh, top-down shooter bullet hell game for my 22nd game. So I reused the bullet hell game, but this time it's not a top-down shooter, there's gravity now. And you're on the ground, and the enemies spawn up here. Next game, same thing, but you can fly around. And it's kind of more fun now. And don't ask me why the bullets are being affected by gravity, because I have no idea. Because I clearly wrote set allow gravity to false inside of the bullets constructor but phaser just doesn't want to listen to me next game it's a platformer you have to try not to fall in the lava and you have to try to get to the end over here and if you get to the end and if you get to the end nothing happens but you still win. Somehow. Don't ask. The next game is the exact same thing, but this time there's coins that you can collect. And, you know, it's more fun if there's coins, right? We. You know the drill, but this time I added a purple square <coughs> portal that you can jump into and you could actually win. Only for an epic gamer like me, though. Otherwise, you can't win. Okay, so now, I completely got rid of that amazing portal and added um, coin spawning. So now, uh, you just have to collect as many coins as possible without falling in the uh, deadly lava. And yes, I know there's no way to know how much coins you have, but listen, no one cares. It, it still works. That's the important part. Game 29. Same thing as the previous, what, five games? But this time there's meteors falling from the sky trying to squash you. 